Hello everyone, so today we're going to have a play around with something which MEX has brought over. This is an oscilloscope, a cathode ray tube oscilloscope, which um, we believe is from Kent County Council at some point, because if you look on top, then you see that it has this great big dirty KCC stamp. Um, right, what can we say about this? So MEX got this online for £30 off eBay, I think he said, delivered, which is quite good given that it's pretty damn heavy. Um, looks like quite a nice scope by my standards, but he thinks perhaps that it's not so nice. Am I right? Yeah, it's pretty rubbish. He thinks it's pretty rubbish, but I've never owned a proper oscilloscope, so this is quite nice by, by my standards. So let's turn it on and have a quick look around. Notice that the power switch has an LED on the end, quite a nice touch. And once it's warmed up, we see these two um, signals. So these are test signals, so this has a signal generator in and all we've done there is plugged these banana leads into the two inputs here. So you can have two different signals at once. Um, although it's the same signal, we've got their um, different voltage per division, so that's why you see one with higher amplitude than the other. And to be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing, I'm going to turn some stuff and we'll see what happens. So that is the time division. Okay. So it seems that the sweep time can be varied from one second, which is very slowly, all the way up to, or down to, I should say, 10 microseconds by the look of it. That looks kind of cool. So that's quite a range, actually. I wouldn't have expected it to go quite as slow as one second, but that's kind of cool. Um, what else have we got here? We've got trigger level, although the triggering we think is broken on this because this switch has been pushed in. It's fallen right in, so that's one of the things we're going to try and fix at some point. Um, so we can't play with trigger, we've got slope, don't know what that is. Part of the trigger mechanism. Part of the trigger mechanism, apparently. Um, what else have we got? This is the signal generator, so we can change the kind of signal that we feed in. Let's just turn that back down to something more useful. So we're here we can vary the frequency of the signal generator. Huh, you see it bouncing there? Yeah, the uh, pot needs cleaning. Uh, so we've got a noisy pot on this, so maybe we can get in that with some switch cleaner. What else have we got? Oh, okay. This is, oh, that looks really cool. It looks like Spirograph. Okay, anything else? Focus, I guess that just changed the sharpness of the line. Am I right? Yep, so that's very soft. And in the middle somewhere is actually sharp. Okay, fine. Intensity, so that's brightness, I suppose. Yep. Anything else interesting here? Um, what have we got over here? Oh, yeah, so we've got separate volts per division for the two inputs, as I said earlier. We've got, what is that? Cal. Calibration? Not sure. What's Cal, Mex? Uh, I believe, I haven't got the manual for it, that's for calibrating. So you put it, turn it to that setting while you're calibrating other things. Right. Okay, so maybe we should dig out the manual, actually, and try and figure out what some of this stuff is. Um, okay, that just offsets the y-axis, and I suppose that's the same for the other input there. So it's it's mostly the same two the same thing twice on the left hand side here for the two inputs. Um, we'll have a quick look around the rest of the box just to see what we've got. What's on the back, for example? So on the back of the unit we have starting on the left something marked line voltage, which you think is about um, changing between American and European power supplies, etc. We've got your standard kettle lead connector for main power. Then we've got a fuse. This is the main fuse. There are two other fuses here. We think the fuses are to do with these connectors here, these terminals. Well, now we're not entirely sure what these are. They're labelled Y2 output, AC 12 volts 0 0.5 amp, ground, AC 12 volt, volts 0 0.5 amps. So our working theory is that this is um, a power supply perhaps, an AC power supply. So we can test these outputs using a multimeter. I've got my meter set to AC voltage. It's auto ranging so we should be able to just touch onto these metal shutters to test what comes out. Okay, so that's kind of not very stable and it's certainly not the advertised voltage. Let's just try the other one in case it's broken. That one is floating around at about 13 volts. 
what was it advertised as? 12 volts. So that, that could be feasible. It could just be, could need calibration. Oh, doesn't seem to, seem to be very stable though. So the other one's broken, is it? See, that one doesn't put out much at all. Okay, I think we're gonna have to look at the manual to decide what those are really doing. Um, we'll have to look on the internet. The reason Mex has brought this over is because it's not in great shape and we're gonna try and fix some aspects of it. So first of all, the banana lead, uh, banana plugs, sorry, are pretty battered up. We suspect this has been used for teaching and children have been chewing it or something. Um, so we've got, from eBay, eBay? AliExpress. AliExpress. From AliExpress, some super cheap but new uh, banana sockets. So um, we should be able to repair those, or at least replace those. Uh, the other thing I already mentioned, the switch here has fallen in, so we want to try and bring that back out and um, see if we can attach it properly, and then we'd be able to use the trigger function. And the other thing was, um, we might have a shot at calibrating this, although we don't really know what we're doing there. I've got a really cheapy oscilloscope that we could probably calibrate it to, but I seriously doubt that that is accurate either. So might have to think about that a bit. So I think what we'll do now is we'll pop the lid and have a quick look inside, see what we can see, decide how hard it is to repair. So let's start undoing some screws. So we've got several screws on each side. So I've done, undone these, I've already done undone the ones on the other side and then there are four more screws on top. Okay, and now I suspect that this will all just lift off like a PC case would. And we're in. <laughs> the first thing I see is a really rusty um, CRT I don't know what I call that case. I'll show you in a minute. In fact, let's, I'm going to lift the tripod up and we can have a look around. So here we are looking down the unit from above. So the first thing you notice is this great big dirty, rusty, I don't know, casing, I suppose, for the cathode ray tube. Looks like that's had better days. The, the next thing I noticed was that there are two transformers, which is kind of unusual. Um, I suppose, is there one for one each input or something? I don't know. Any ideas, Mex? It's got out voltage outputs. It might be to do with the power supply. Yeah. In the front. These always make me very nervous because you should, I always think I'm going to electrocute myself on these, so I've got to be careful that I don't go near those. Um, what else have we got in here? We've got all of the logic is here on this one board mostly, and it's all discrete components. There's no chips in sight, so that probably tells us something about the age. What do you reckon, 80s? Probably. Eight, maybe the 80s. See if we can find something with a date code on it. Yeah, they sometimes put date codes on the components, so we might be able to figure out how old it is from just looking at the board. And there's a few kind of tiny little boards sticking off here, which are connected to various switches and things. Um, some big capacitors down there, we need to steer clear of those. Ah, there's another board here, which you can't see, actually. Um, anything interesting on that? Mm, just some big capacitors and things. Ceramic capacitors as well. Not a great deal interesting on the boards, to be honest. It's all just discrete components, resistors, capacitors. A few trimmers, probably for calibration. Not a great deal more, really. I was expecting there to be a bit more than this in here. Hmm. So let's have a quick look at what we're going to try and repair in probably another video. Starting with the switch that's fallen in. You can see it's here. Oh. Yeah, okay, so it's moving, it's floating around, and it looks to me like that's actually going to fall apart. Yeah, so the switch has actually broken. We might be able to repair the switch or find a replacement part, I'm not sure. But it should also be screwed in somehow. It's not evident why it's not screwed to the front. I guess it's just broken and fallen out. Okay, so that's the first thing we'll have to fix. As for the plugs, uh, looks like they come out easily enough. Uh, there's just a washer holding them on on the back. But what worries us a bit is that there's lots of point-to-point um, -point, um, wiring, which we have to get right. We have Basically, what we'll have to do is take pictures of how all of this is hanging together before so that we can put it back in the right place. But it should be fairly easy, actually, to get the plugs in. So that's, yeah, that's probably the easiest task we've got here. 
As for calibration, the board has a ton of trimmer pots on for adjusting various different aspects. So luckily on the board they're all labelled so you can see OSC sign level, square level, uh, stability, length, etc. All we have to do is find the, the settings that we're interested in and calibrate them to some other source which we know to be reliable. I've never calibrated an oscilloscope so I have no idea how hard that is but we shall soon find out. While we're here notice how many bodge wires there are all over this board. So that's probably not by design I imagine. And it's not just bodge wires, there's actually some other components bodged on. This diode here is connected over a capacitor, so the capacitor is on the other side of the board. Um, what else have we got? So, something here, that's another diode connected over... I don't know what it's connected over actually. But yeah, it looks like they deviated from the design they wanted a bit. Um, there's two boards like this and the other one isn't nearly as bad as this, so it's not all bad. And remember the line voltage thing that we saw on the back? Well, funnily enough, that's hooked up to a um, to a potentiometer, which wasn't really what I was expecting, because well, it's not really clear to me even how the the thing on the back should actually be turning a potentiometer. So all you've got there really is like a little hole with a metal surface on. So how should you turn a potentiometer with that? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I'm hoping we'll find the manual and this will all become clear. So I think we'll wrap it up there. In another video, we're going to actually try and fix all this stuff. So I'll see you then. Bye.